Hi, I'm Jane Wynn with the Berkshire Environmental Action Team, or BEAT. On April 23rd, we held a webinar to talk about the settlement agreement for the Housatonic River remediation. We started off with a seven minute portion of the 1945 film called This Is Your River. We did run into some technical difficulties, but we recorded the webinar. So here's the film and then a recording of the webinar. We hope you enjoy it. These are your hills, and through them course the multiple interests of scenery, arts, and history. Through them, too, courses your river, the Housatonic, from its upstream beds to its exit at the southern line of your county. All along its banks are nearby homes and summer camps with hundreds of trusting children. Children who have come to the Berkshires for health and outdoor living, trying to build healthy bodies. They need a clean, wholesome river. They need the Housatonic. No, the Housatonic is for pigs and garbage, foul-smelling pollution, for rats and filth, for human sewage, stinking gallons of it, breeding disease and vermin. Your river is for mill pollution, pouring its continuous stream of fish-killing acid into your river. Beautiful Berkshire County, pride of the state. This is your river as it really is, as you made it. A flow of pollution and disease-spreading filth. A festering sore in the beautiful setting you call home. A smear that follows the entire course of your river. Through river banks lined with lovely estates, humble houses, in the town or in the county. No community along these banks is guiltless of a share in the spoilage of the Housatonic. Take these documented scenes to your own heart. You and your hometown are continuously contributing to this shame. Into the head streams of the Housatonic pour all manner of pollution. Untreated sewage, month after month, the year round. Before you turn away, contemplate one more aspect of what these waters carry. Disease, epidemics, and death. Of course it's the other fellow's family, but it could be yours. Laboratory analysis proves that polluted waters are a constant breeding ground for disease. The dreaded polio can stem from contaminated rivers and streams. Here is the enemy seen through a powerful microscope. This germ and millions of other carriers of sickness are unseen guests in your home. Pure drinking water is not enough. That protects only one of many avenues by which disease can enter your home. Children are especially vulnerable. Their drinking water is safe, but there are hundreds of ways in which the dangers of the Housatonic can reach them. It's so simple to twist a handle and get rid of waste matter, but flies and other insects bring it right back into your home. Pigs and chickens along the river feed on it. Dairy cows drink the water. These endless gallons hide their filth below the surface or deposit mile after mile of it along the river banks. Yes, it's simple to twist a handle in your home and forget all about it but it happens thousands of times a day, up and down the county, in factories and homes, bathrooms and outhouses. Thousands of gallons are continually spilling into the Housatonic, the cesspool of the Berkshires. When the river is low, these deposits festering along the river banks are a perfect breeding place for the same flies and mosquitoes 
you find in your home, on your food, and on your children. Yes, you, your children, your whole family are constantly at the mercy of these polluted waters and their everlasting and increasing supply of filthy, stinking sewage. You have created this situation. You have so polluted this river that it is unfit for any human use, a liability instead of an asset. Its banks are a loss to the community as well as the individual who owns the property. Fish cannot live in it, so there is no fishing. It is useless for sport. Swimming and canoeing are impossible. You created and support this situation. You are a constant contributor to this disgrace. You owe it to yourself and neighbors to clean up the Housatonic. In self-defense, as a health protection for yourself and family, you must end this pollution. It is a civic and moral obligation to send this water on its way to neighboring communities as nature gave it to us, pure and clean. The Housatonic is also a catch basin for all kinds of filth and decaying matter a poisonous trap for all wildlife. Its worst disease breeding spot is as near to you as the nearest fly or mosquito. Look at this disgraceful sight, untreated human sewage, huge lumps of it floating in poisonous green waters in the very shadow of homes filled with unsuspecting children. This is their playground. And yet the solution is so simple. It is up to citizens like these the people on this corner, the people who live on this street, the people who live here, the people who live in this town. You meet them every day, going in to borrow a book or in church. It is the personal business and responsibility of every citizen in the Berkshires, one and all, in every town and village. It's you, not the other fellow. It means you and you. And you, yes, you too, brother. You have a voice. Raise that voice of yours now. Demand action on the pollution problem as it affects your town. When we have done our share in cleaning up the Housatonic, every man, woman, and child will respect its clean waters. And we will have a healthier, a happier, and a safer place to live in. It's up to you. Um, so that is a film that was made in 1945 by the Friends of the Housatonic River, an organization that's not around anymore. Um, but we will have it up on our YouTube channel so you can see the actual version of it. It's really quite impressive. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We have about 30 people on here so far. I'm Jane Wynn, for anybody who doesn't know me, with Berkshire Environmental Action Team, or BEAT. And Elizabeth Orenstein is also here, our Education and Outreach Coordinator. Ooh, and Rose Wessel from No Track Gas and Mass as well. Um, Elizabeth's going to be helping me keep an eye on the chat, so if you have questions, please type them in the chat and Elizabeth will be able to feed them to me. Uh, Beat's mission is to protect the environment for wildlife in support of the natural world that sustains us all. So I hope everyone is doing okay in these very weird times we're living in. It's really great to see so many familiar faces. Um, let's see. Typing your questions into chat. Elizabeth will keep an eye on the chat box. In general, I think we'll hold questions to the end, but if they're clarifying questions, she can interrupt me. And for most of this presentation, I'm going to do slides so that if you make your view full screen, that should work well. Um, let's see, any questions in there so far, Elizabeth? Okay. So, let me just, oops, so here, sorry, I've got my instructions written down on exactly how to do this, so. <laughs> 
Oh, and um, for for participants, um, I've I've disallowed you for to unmute yourselves mostly for um, background static um, annoyance. Over yes, the button Brittany. you're supposed to press. Can everyone? Uh, well, if you desperately need something, don't be afraid to message me. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Can everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. Jane, can you go to full screen? Elizabeth, can you see the screen? Yeah, can you hear me, Jane? Okay, for some reason I can't hear you. Can you hear me still? Can you give me a thumbs up? Okay. Go to full screen. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and let me make a big wave if something goes wrong, how's that? So the film called This Is Your River was from 1945. It really showed just how polluted the river was. And that's the way I remember it. That was before the Clean Water Act was passed. And the Clean Water Act didn't exactly stop companies from dumping their pollution in the river or in any of the waters of the United States, but instead required them to get permits to be allowed to dump into the river. Okay, from... <laughs> Let me just try to make sure this is at full screen. Is that better? Yes. Oh, you plugged in. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> can you hear us Sorry. now, Jane? Can you hear me now? We're perfectly in trial. Okay. <laughs> Jane, can you hear me now? I still can't hear you at all. That's okay. I'll just text you if I need Sorry, to. Sorry, folks. Give me one more second here. Can you try it again? Jane, hi. How are you? I'm not hearing a thing. Okay. I'm going to keep going then. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So the Clean Water Act required people or companies to get permits, National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permits, or NIPTES permits. And these actually tell a company how much pollution they're allowed to put into the river or lake. And in general, they've worked pretty well. The river is a lot cleaner than it was when I was growing up, but this program is way underfunded and also underpoliced. So if you see pipes where there are weird things coming into a river or lake, let us know, or the DEP or the EPA. And we're seeing plenty of places where the NIPTES program is failing. And one of those is at Silver Lake. The old GE campus is to the right in this picture, and it's now owned by the Pittsfield Economic Development Authority, or PETA. And they, or EPA, developed a NIPTES permit for this pipe that comes out under Silver Lake Boulevard. But PETA didn't like it, so they never actually issued the permit. And the permit that they're operating under is decades old. So there are still PCBs being allowed to come into Silver Lake and then into our river. So I'm just gonna switch back to me for a moment. Um, signing the settlement agreement was not a decision that Beat took light, lightly. Oops, there we go. We were prepared to fight for a dump in Berkshire County, even though we thought we could not win. But this, this settlement guarantees no high-level dump 
and also the removal of 100 acres more contamination, plus it has other benefits. So we feel strongly that settlement is the best decision for wildlife, the environment, the river ecosystem, and for the health of people living along the river. Not signing might have been easier for us as an organization, but it would have gone against everything we believe in, doing our best to protect the environment for wildlife and trying to be transparent about exactly why we're doing this. So I hope to make three key points tonight. With um, one, I believe that we were apt to get a dump or three with at least one being high level if this were permitted, permitted without the settlement. Without the settlement, we'd be accepting a hundred acre unlined and only partially capped dump in the river, basically the part that the settlement is getting out of there. And leaving that in just is not acceptable. This is one of the reasons we appealed the 2016 EPA permit and one of the reasons we signed the settlement. And three, EPA has agreed to put their own money forward to work on finding an acceptable alternative technology to destroy our PCBs without creating even more toxic chemicals. PCBs are polychlorinated biphenyls. Um, chlorinated anything is toxic, unless you take those chlorine atoms and combine them to make a salt, like NaCl, table salt. And even that can be bad if it's in the wrong place. So when you come up with a process to destroy PCBs, and ours are highly chlorinated PCBs, you have to account for where those chlorine atoms are ending up. Just because you lower the levels of PCBs doesn't mean you've reduced the toxicity. If those chlorine atoms combine to make a more toxic chemical, we don't want that. So a lot of testing is required to make sure we know what is happening to those atoms. This testing out of alternative technologies is only going to happen if we hold EPA's, EPA to it. So having it written into the settlement gives us the leverage to hold EPA to really testing out these technologies. I'm going to switch back. Oops. To my slides. So where are we and how did we get here with the remediation? Just a bit of history. The east branch of the Housatonic River, starting about at the GE campus in Pittsfield, wasn't running where people wanted it to be. So, oops. They created a new channel and they put the river in it in 1940. So much of the river through Pittsfield was already channelized. And it was very polluted can you hear me? with PCBs and other toxic chemicals. The PCBs were disposed of in and along the river by the General Electric Company. They were a major employer in Pittsfield for many years. And from now on, I'm going to try to always refer to the General Electric Company as GE. This photo isn't from the Housatonic. And basically, the way I remember it as a child, all the vegetation in there was gone. There was no vegetation. But that oily slickness, that's how the river looked most of the time when it wasn't sort of white and foamy. So that was back in the 1960s. GE also generously gave away clean fill, free to anyone who wanted it. The problem was the fill wasn't clean. It was contaminated with PCBs. GE also hired unscrupulous haulers to dispose of barrels of PCBs, which ended up all over the place. Dumped in oxbows, those are the former meanders of the river, or places where when we straightened the river, we left old pieces of the river. Oops, hold on one second. Yes, yes. Oh no. I know Elizabeth is trying to let me know something, but I don't know what. Your screen sharing is on. Oh, shoot. Thank you. Is that... 
Oh shoot. Okay. Um, good. Sorry, guys. But you can hear me, right? I can hear you. Yep, we can all hear you. You just can't hear me. So this is where the river was and the channel they created. And then they put in the river into the new channel. And this is the picture showing how I remember the Housatonic River only with no vegetation in the oily scum. So in 2000, a court ordered legally binding consent decree was issued that has set the framework for everything that happens regarding the remediation of the Housatonic River, its floodplains, and the properties contaminated with GE's PCBs. And the framework was really specific on the remediation of the first two miles of the East Branch of the Housatonic from the GE campus down to the confluence of the West Branch of the Housatonic River. Also, the GE campus and many of its properties that received clean fill were really specifically outlined in the consent decree. So on this map, if you look at the bottom where you can see Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, and over on the left, the what's Housatonic River, it starts, the East Branch starts in Hinsdale and Washington and comes down through Pittsfield by the old GE campus. And the top box is showing the GE campus with Silver Lake on the west end and the Allendale school area sort of in the middle and the river running just south of it. These mustard colored areas are where there were former oxbows, either naturally occurring or ones that we created when we channelized the river. And the consent decree broke the river up into various pieces. So from this little red mark here to here, we have the Newell Street Bridge to Lyman Street. And that was remediated from October 1999 to September 2002. And that was done by GE under EPA supervision. The next mile and a half from the Lyman Street Bridge down to the confluence in the lower left of that box was remediated, mostly completed by 2006. And that was done by EPA and then there was a cost sharing agreement where GE had to pay back for just part of the work that was done. And this map is better at showing where the confluence is. So up to the right is where the East Branch is coming in from GE and it comes down to Fred Garner Park on Pomeroy Ave. And the West Branch is coming in from under South Street off to the left. And below that is the main stem. And the river was cleaned up to the confluence, or I shouldn't say cleaned up, remediated to the confluence. And I grew up just down the road from Fred Garner Park at the corner of Holmes and Pomeroy, right across from Canoe Meadows. So this was my playground growing up. This picture is actually from the confluence looking down the main stem. So looking back at this, the consent decree was also specific about where the waste for the first part of the cleanup, first parts of the cleanup would be. If you look at the Allendale school area on this map, it was right south of that. So looking at this aerial photo, we can see the Allendale Elementary School and its play yard south of it. And then just right across this street is Hill 78. This is a landfill that was built on a dump that GE had already created. So we have no idea what was in there, but they were allowed to then put on top of that all low level PCB waste. So anything under 50 parts per million. And then that was capped. So it's unlined, but capped. And right next to it is a high level dump called Building 71, because there used to be a building there. And this is a high level dump. It is lined and there are pipes under there to collect the leachate or liquid that comes out of it. It has high level waste, which means 50 parts per million 
or more. And a lot of what went in there was a lot higher waste. And it is also capped. But the consent decree allowed three dumps. So there was another possible dump that would have been just south of this map on the corner of New York Ave and Merrill, Merrill Road. And that also would have been a high level dump. So the consent decree allowed in Pittsfield three dumps, two of which were high level. According to the consent decree, GE would have to perform, um, whoops, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. The consent decree also set out the legal framework resulting in the 2016 permit that EPA issued for the rest of the river. The box on the right shows from the confluence heading down to Woods Pond is the first part of the rest of the river, but the rest of the river really goes down through Connecticut all the way to the Long Island Sound. For the rest of the river, EPA was required by the consent decree to conduct additional sampling, develop a human health risk assessment, and an ecological risk assessment. They were also required to perform complex modeling of fate and transport of sediment and PCBs in the river, as well as modeling how that would affect fish. These were then peer reviewed. Beat did not agree with some of the conclusions about the fate and transport of PCBs, nor how the modeling would affect fish. Uh, we felt the scientists who did the peer review agreed with us, uh, EPA disagreed. Our disagreement is part of the reason we do not believe putting a cap down in the river would work. EPA then, after that, selected a remedy based on these data. And in October 2016, they issued their final Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, or RICRA, permit. According to the consent decree, GE would have to perform the selected remediation after completion of any dispute resolution under the consent decree. And specifically, it said, quote, dispute resolution may include review by the EPA Environmental Appeals Board and the United States Court of Appeals for the First Circuit. Well, BEAT appealed the EPA's permit to the Environmental Appeals Board. So did GE, the Housatonic River Initiative, C. Jeffrey Cook, and the rest of River Committee, which consisted of Lennox, Lee, Sheffield, Stockbridge, and Great Barrington. And Mass Audubon also submitted an amicus brief on the appeal. So Beat's appeal had three areas where we felt that EPA's permit was not protective enough of ecological health. These were the floodplain and vernal pools. We didn't think they were doing a good job for proposing to clean that up. We also disagreed with the use of engineered caps instead of removing PCBs in the river. And we felt that EPA was not requiring removal of enough contamination, but were relying on capping behind dams and in impoundments. We did support the offsite disposal of all the contaminated soil and sediment. The Environmental Appeals Board decided against all the appeals and upheld EPA's permit as is, except they did not uphold sending waste out of state. Instead, they sent that part back and told EPA to better defend that part of their decision. This is where the EPA could have resubmitted to the Environmental Appeals Board with an enhanced reasoning of why the waste should be sent out of state. In my opinion, there was a chance the EAB would have agreed to sending the waste out of state. But then GE would have appealed to the US Court of Appeals. And I don't believe there was much of any chance that the appeals court would have upheld the EPA's decision. And the part of the reason I don't think so is because the precedent of the consent decree that allowed three dumps in Pittsfield with two of those being high level waste for high level waste. Also, there are sites across the country where EPA has cited dumps near the waste that was being cleaned up, and many of those accepted high-level waste. So if the process had continued, we believe the Berkshires would have had at least one, possibly three, new high-level dumps. 
There's also the possibility that the EAB or Environmental Appeals Board would have just plain decided against EPA and we'd have had a dump with the same permit that EPA had come up with. But EPA offered a different dispute resolution, mediation. And we really hated that this was done behind closed doors, but this sort of negotiation is done behind closed doors. Executive session, specifically so the parties can negotiate. It's the legal process that is set up for doing this sort of thing. We did not expect to like the outcome of mediation, but we do. We won the first three items in our appeal. Oh, I gather Jim McGrath, uh, the city of Pittsfield also filed an amicus brief. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> so first three items in our appeal. One, a pilot study for vernal pools based on sound science. There will be a process to determine what constitutes success. And we will suggest that one criterion should be that there are no PCBs left in the pool. But we're concerned that all the obligate vernal pool species, especially the amphibians like wood frogs, spotted salamanders, and Jefferson salamanders, any species that bred in the pool before remediation should be found breeding there after remediation. By this criterion, the remediation of the first vernal pool that was already remedied, remediated in 2006 was a success. Our second part of our appeal, capping. The settlement has much less capping in the river. We feel really strongly that putting a cap just covering up con contamination in a flowing dynamic river is a really bad idea, especially in light of the climate crisis where we're getting changing rainfall patterns with much stronger storms. And our third piece, third complaint in our appeal, we wanted much more excavation and this um, settlement includes a lot more excavation behind the three dams plus excavation behind these two dams and the dams themselves will be removed. We didn't even consider asking for dam removal in our appeal because we didn't think there was any chance the Environmental Appeals Board would even consider it. And for the other part of our appeal, no dumps in the Berkshires. Well, with the settlement, we won't have a high level dump in the Berkshires and it'll be down to just one dump. All the high level material will be sent out of state. And to be clear, the material should be tested first and EPA has said they will test the material first, determine where the high level contamination is, remove that, and then take out the lower level contamination so that we can be assured that really the high level contamination is going out, not just getting mixed in with everything else. Right now, the river and the floodplain is the dump. It's unlined and uncapped. Mink can't reproduce. The young don't survive because of the high levels of PCBs in the fish mink eat. People believe their cancer was caused by PCB exposure, and I believe they're probably right, but it's very hard to prove a causal link, so they'll never be compensated for it. Compared to the settlement, under the 2016 permit, there would be 100 acres of PCB contaminated soil and sediment left in the river and floodplain basically as an unlined and only partially capped dump. This is a huge reason we think the settlement is better than the 2016 permit. And the other benefit is the work is starting immediately. Now granted right now, it's mostly just testing and paperwork. So I am assuming they are continuing on some front with it, even during this crisis. Um, the, Envi the Environmental Appeals Board, I, I believe they were appointed, gee, I'm not sure I, exactly who does appoint them. I'm assuming it would have been under Trump. My uh, feeling is that we have not seen much um, political influence 
in our district of the EPA at this point. But that was definitely a concern of whether the, um, the Environmental Appeals Board and for that matter our EPA would be under pressure to not do as good a job on cleanup and let GE off the hook. So having this move forward more quickly is a benefit on that front as well. So this is a map showing basically where the lane gravel area is, where the dump would be. And here's a closer up with Woods Pond up at the top of this map. And you can see the lane quarry. If you're on, I think it's Crystal Street in Lennoxdale, you see the quarry right along the river. The dump site would be way up the hill near Woodland Road. So with the settlement, we've agreed to have one low level dump, but built to a high level protective standard. So it would be lined with uh, pipes to collect the leachate um, and also capped at the end. Just to be clear how badly Pittsfield was treated in the 2000 consent decree, the utility corridor in Pittsfield that was cleaned up partly, they left high level waste at the bottom of it. And then when they were filling in that area, they were allowed to use um, soil that was contaminated up to 25 parts per million. And that wasn't capped, that was the cap, 25 parts per million. And EPA is saying that they believe that the contamination that will be going into this landfill will average 25 parts per million. Now, I still think that's too much PCBs to have anywhere, but at least in this case, it will be in a lined, capped landfill. And we'll be working on trying to get it, our PCBs, um, alternative technologies to remediate them. One of the other benefits under the settlement is that EPA and GE have agreed to try to do much of the cleanup by hydraulic dredging. So on the right side of this image, you have the landfill at the bottom, a dewatering area that things would be pumped to first, and they would use a piping system and hydraulically dredge as much of wood pond and upstream as they could. So you wouldn't have any truck traffic doing this, it would all be piped. And they've also agreed for any truck traffic they have to use Woodland Road instead of driving through Lennoxdale. And this is one place where I feel like beat blew it. If I had realized that, or if we had realized that um, they were going to be using Woodland Road, there are several culverts on Woodland Road that we would like them to have to replace with bridges so that fish and wildlife could move safely under the road during most of the year and also have the bridges be large enough so that they'd pass the real hundred year storm. But we'll push for that anyway, but it's not in the settlement. So EPA is also committed to soliciting input and working with all stakeholders and they specifically called out including Native American tribes as the cleanup design progresses. And I was impressed that I sort of asked, okay, well, have you started doing that? And yes, they have. They really have reached out and are trying to seriously work with tribes as opposed to uh, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission that makes a total joke of it. Um, also, GE has committed in writing in the settlement agreement to review recent and new, oops, spelled new wrong, research on alternative technologies for PCB remediation and to collaborate on on-site technology demonstrations and efforts and pilot studies. We need to hold them to this. There was some mention of this back in 2000 and it never really happened. So this is one of the places that I really hope the public will keep holding their feet to the fire. So getting back to the NIPTES permit and Silver Lake, this is also included in the settlement. 
GE has agreed to engage in good faith discussions with EPA regarding a new NIPTES permit for the former facility. And we're going to be watching carefully. The way the EPA had worded the last permit, the, allow, the amount of PCBs that would be allowed to go into the lake would be so low that they couldn't be detected. GE and EPA appear to believe that through best management practices, including relining pipes in the stormwater system and possibly having to clean up that whole stormwater system, they'll be able to actually reduce the PCBs to a non-detect level. So there are a lot of other benefits in the settlement negotiations by, for example, by Mass Audubon for Canoe Meadows and the towns in Pittsfield, but I covered the benefits that BEAT is working on. So if you want to find out a lot more from the EPA's website, here's the link to their website on this whole settlement and what's been done so far. And now I'm going to need to figure out how to actually, let's see. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So we will have this a link to their um, website on our website as well. And now I have to figure out how I can actually make it so that I can hear Elizabeth. Jean, can you hear me now? Um, maybe not. Let me try. One more time with my settings. Jean, yeah. Jane, how about now? Jane, how about now? Nope. Okay. So, hi, Elizabeth. I think it might. Now I'm not going to be able to tell which is working. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hang on, let me just disconnect my. Oh, glass, I've got so much. <laughs> All right, folks, so I've got I have two views of myself. It's very weird. I know. <laughs> it's necessary, I swear. And do you have questions for me? That's a great question. Um, oh dear. Yes, you were unmuted so everybody could hear that. I'm, I'm really not sure exactly what's going to happen with all the different groups coming together. I think um, there's a very strong feeling that we don't want dumps in Berkshire County. And I completely understand. It's just that I think that having the river as a dump is even worse than having a dump that's lined and capped and low level with everything being everything else being taken out of state. And I'm worried that we could possibly lose that if the settlement is appealed. Um, I hope not. And I hope that we could all come together and really be pushing the EPA on actually destroying the PCBs and have that move forward faster. But there's no way to tell how quickly a technology will really work to destroy our PCBs. Oh, 
I'm sorry. The question, <laughs> the question was with all the different groups having different positions on the settlement, um, can we come together and all agree? And I don't know. Um, I hope so. And I'm sure we can all agree on really pushing EPA to work on cleaning up the PCBs. Okay, so the question was, how do we move forward from where we are now? The next step that's gonna be happening is the EPA will have to issue a new permit based on the settlement. And when they do that, then everyone can comment on it. And once everybody's comments have been taken into consideration and answered, it gets issued as a final permit that can again be appealed the people who signed on to the settlement can't appeal anything that's in line with what the settlement said. So if EPA changes and says something that isn't in the settlement, we could appeal that part. Um, but we can't appeal having the one low level lined dump, for example. But others who didn't sign the settlement still could. Um, okay, so the question is, how much damage actually will be done to nature during the remediation, um, the riverbanks, things like that, and also what about PCBs getting into the air during the remediation? Um, so this is a very different part of the river, and EPA is really aware of the fact that trying to channelize anything is out. There are some places where people's homes may be threatened, where they may try to use some sort of hardening, but instead of using the riprap that was used throughout Pittsfield, they would be trying to use more um, natural materials, stumps, uh, logs, things like that. And all of this gets decided as they're coming up with the work plan. So GE will propose a work plan for the first mile of the river and then Everybody gets to comment on it, and then it gets decided on and done. And I believe we will still be having citizens coordinating meetings where people can be coming and giving input on a regular basis. And they really have listened to us. A lot of things have changed based on what we've said. So being involved makes a difference. Um, also on the how much nature will be destroyed, one of the things we're really pushing for is having um, having the floodplain carefully cleaned so that the river will be able to still move like a river should be able to move without then getting more PCBs in it. So the hot spots along the floodplain need to be out of there so the river can behave like a regular river. And also the dredging means that they won't be creating as many um, staging areas. And those are the things I feel do the major destruction of totally compacting soils next to the river. So the fewer staging areas we have, the better. But it should end up looking much more like a natural river than what is in Pittsfield. And the vegetation actually comes back really quickly. And I'm really interested to see how long it would take for mink to be able to breed along the, this stretch of the river. And what we need first on that is to know for sure, the last data I think is from 2002. So it'd be nice to know how well mink are doing right now. And then once it's cleaned up, have it tested again. Yes. Um, well, to me, mink are important because they're mink, but I think they are a top predator and they eat fish so that they're a really good indicator of how the ecosystem in general is doing along the stretch of the river. Um, they have been tested and it was shown that eating the mink, the 
mother minks eating fish from the Housatonic River, the pups could not survive. They all died. So it'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward. That also gives a pretty good indication that people shouldn't be eating fish from our river, which there are signs posted all up and down the river saying that. Okay, the question is, um, Beat is so excited about there being less capping, but there's still going to be capping at Rising Pond and behind a couple of the other dams. And why was that allowed? I agree. I guess that was one of the points where we just couldn't push EPA, I'm sorry, not EPA, GE, to agree to really remove enough so there didn't have to be capping. Um, it would have been great if we could have gotten them to get those areas down to one part per million as well. But that didn't happen. It would have meant removing more sediment and we just didn't get it. Um, it was a negotiation. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what? That, that, Yes, yes. Oh, okay, I will keep it up there. Okay, uh, a multi-part question here, um, and I, I do see it in front of me. Um, this is from Uli, who lives near the Columbia Mill. So has train transport been discussed? Yes, and actually it was one of the things that several of us were really pushing for with the caveat that the Housatonic Railroad is a class three railroad, and even for a class three railroad, they have a really bad track record of having their trains derail and go into the river. So we wanted the tracks upgraded as well as train transport. And I think train transport is still on the table. Um, it'll be as they're developing the work plans moving forward, they'll decide whether that really will work or not. Um, and I think, gee, I don't know, I guess, that's the answer to the train part of the question. Um, she also said that there's a treatment with sedamite that binds PCBs for fast results to lower the levels in fish. The problem with that is that it binds the PCBs, but it doesn't get rid of them. And it may be a good solution in some places, we're concerned about, with all the active carbon um, possibilities, we're concerned about where that carbon comes from. We want it to be from natural sources, and we want them to test it out and see how well it really works. And for things like vernal pools, we really are not thrilled with that idea. Um, there are a whole lot of unknowns, but a vernal pool system is based on detritus and so binding the PCBs doesn't really do you any good. That's part of what gets mixed into that whole food chain. Um, there may be places where it would work, maybe especially behind dams. If you're going to be doing capping, having something like that to bind the PCBs at the lowest level of the cap might actually work. And I think that's one of the things that would still be on the table. Um, and what's the timeline right now? The, let's see, GE is supposed to come out with their first work plan, I believe by June 9th. I think that's still true. And the EPA, I think about on the same time frame, is trying to come out with its draft permit. Um, although I could be wrong on that. I'll need to double check with the EPA. It may say on the website as well. 
I am, but I'm not good at, at really looking through it. So if you, you ah, and I, so the question is, what is GE doing now during the pandemic to get started? And I have not really checked in with them. I was assuming that a lot of the work they have to do is going out and doing testing, which there's all the construction on the gas pipelines is moving forward. So I was assuming going out and sampling along the Housatonic where you can really be six feet apart was probably moving forward, but that may be a faulty assumption. Um, much of their work is desk work that they could be doing from home. So I'm assuming it's moving forward, but this is a, a really good question and I will check in with EPA and find the answer. This is, uh, so how well does the remediation under the settlement take into account the likelihood of extreme weather? And this is one of the places where we really, really, really support the settlement. It's so much better for extreme weather events than the 2016 permit. It's really getting a lot more out of the river, a lot less capping so that, yes, I'm upset that they're still leaving some capping, but it just is going to make this much, much better than it would have been, in our opinion. And that I'm, for the dump, I am less worried about extreme weather because they have already had to deal with extreme weather events while doing a dump, and they've gotten very good at really keeping it covered in a way that sheds the water rather than having it going into the dump. And one of the the dumps that failed that's often cited, actually it's the one dump I really know of that completely failed. The reason it failed was it was not properly supervised and extreme weather events happened and the water got into the dump and it was a complete failure. I think uh, EPA is extremely aware of that and on top of the situation. Boy, and I think that's a really good question for the EPA. It's hard because all the rivers are so different. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, question is, do we know of any rivers with similar habitat and repairing conditions that have been remediated in this manner? And that, that's a really good question for the EPA. Uh, certainly there's the Hudson River, but it's so different from ours. And there have been a number of other rivers, including upstream of this one. Upstream of this one, we definitely have the problem that because it was channelized, they weren't worried about allowing the river to be a natural river. So that uh, I don't feel like it's all that comparable. I do feel like the way that they are specifying doing this cleanup removing hot spots so that the river can continue, continue to meander is really good. And I think they are going to be sensitive as they move forward and we will try to hold them to being sensitive of not removing any trees that don't absolutely have to be. If you can clean up next to a building, you can clean up next to many of the trees. The hot spots in general aren't under the tr large tree roots because those large trees have been there forever. You can clean up around them and do a sufficient job, I, I believe. Oh, are, does anybody have any more questions? I think we have time for one or two more. And I'm so sorry about this audio glitch. Really and truly, my headphones are plugged in. And <laughs> Oh, Uli said, how would we, how would be like to have people help? I think the main thing is when these work plans come out from GE, we want people to comment and to push to have the best cleanup possible. 
Um, we want to keep pushing to make sure all high-level contamination is taken out of state, which will be in the decree. But if, if we can get more contamination taken out, that would be great. Um, and really pushing for trying out alternative technologies. I think that's going to be huge. And right now, I think EPA is really committed to it. But keeping the pressure up will make the difference. Jane, out of curiosity, can you hear me? Yes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Glad that got solved. Um, well, thank you all for your wonderful comments, and we're getting we're getting a lot of appreciation in um, uh, in the chat, and we really appreciate it. I want to thank Jane um, for giving this wonderful presentation. Um, we, we apologize for the technical difficulties, but we really appreciate y'all sticking with us. Um, I want to give a shout out to Tom Tining's um, rattlesnake background. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't see that one. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's so nice to see everybody through this whole thing. I haven't been able to see everyone. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Should I unmute people, Jane? Sure. Yes. Okay. Can you do unmute all? Everyone is allowed to <coughs> You can mute yourself here. Cheers for James. Cheers for James. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the technical glitch is the last harm. The information was great. <laughs> Thank you.